Jesus, in all the good times and the bad times, you are still God. Right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. God alone. From the God, mighty God, he took my sins away, he took my sins away, and keeps me singing every day, I'm so glad he took my
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our morning lesson is taken from 2 Timothy 2, from verse 20 to 26. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll read and you follow. Praise God. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor and some of dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's house, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow peace with them, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, up to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at, at his will. You're in the portion of God's holy word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Yes, Lord. Complete.
yes, Lord. Oh, God, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, from the bottom of my heart. Oh, God, Jesus. Another yes to you this morning. Oh, Jesus. As I stand in your house. Oh, God, to give you thanks. As I worship you. As I honor your name. As I lift you up. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, Jesus, for life. Oh, God, even for this gathering. Oh, God, to worship you. Oh, God, to lift you up. To place you where you belong. Oh, mighty God, above all else. Oh, mighty God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, another day, mighty God. Oh, God, in your house, mighty God, to lift you up and to magnify your name. Oh, mighty God, Jesus. Oh, God, I'm eternally grateful. Oh, God, because of your faithfulness. Oh, mighty God, and your mercy. Oh, God, the mercy that you have bestowed upon us. Oh, mighty God, thank you for being God. Oh, God, you could be no one else. Oh, Jesus, you have spared our lives. And you have brought us here, mighty God, as your people, to magnify your name, to honor you, mighty God. Lord Jesus, we look to you in all things. Believe in mighty God that you are God. Oh, God, we place everything before you. Oh, Jesus, we place ourselves before you. Oh, mighty God, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God, the one who God you have placed. Oh, God, at the head. Oh, God, who is steering this ship. I place him in your hands. Oh, mighty God. His family, I place them in your hands. Oh, God, all the saints of grace and truth. Oh, mighty God, those who are here. Those who are not here for whatever reason you alone know. Oh, God, we put them all before you, Jesus. Continue, mighty God, to be your shield. Continue to be your guide. Oh, mighty God, continue to be your protector. Oh, God, you have been protecting us. You, mighty God, have been a person. Oh, mighty God, who is leading. Oh, mighty God, this morning, we place you at the highest place. Because you are the great high priest. For you, mighty God, oh, Jesus, oh, the great and mighty God, how wonderful you are, how mighty you are. Oh, God, as we're about to go into our midday service, God, oh, God, we place every word, every praise, every song, mighty God, we give it to you because it is all yours, mighty God. We cannot do this on our own. Oh, mighty God, we need you. Oh, God, remove us, Lord, and stand in our stead. God, have your own sweet way in this place this morning. You are already here. Oh, mighty God, allow us to focus on you. Oh, mighty God, to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor that you deserve. Oh, mighty God, help us not to look. Oh, mighty God, our neighbor, but to focus on you. As we start our week, depending on you to take us through. Oh, God, depending on you to go before us every day. Oh, mighty God, Jesus. Oh, God, to clear our way. We know you can. Nothing is impossible if we just trust you. Oh, mighty God, if we just, mighty God, give it all to you. Oh, mighty God, Jesus, Jesus. We give you everything this morning. We give this service to you. To you all things belong. Oh, mighty God, we give you back. Oh, mighty God, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God, every worship, every praise, every word. Anoint them with your Holy Spirit. Oh, mighty God, they may not reach back to you. Empty, mighty God. Oh, Jesus, have your sweet way with us this morning. In your name we pray. Mighty God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Give him a clap and praise this morning. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, mighty God, thank you, Jesus, you are worthy.
worthy. Oh God, our theme this morning is honoring God, my neighbor, myself. Today we'll be focusing on honoring my body, a vessel of honor. We are also reminded as individuals that we are bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. As such, each person has a responsibility to present himself a vessel of honor for the master's use. Mighty God, are we vessels of honor this morning? As we go through our everyday activities, we know that we belong to God. Mighty God, and as we stand here before him, can you imagine we are standing in his house? We are standing before his altar. Mighty God, no longer do we have to get, oh, turtle doves and priests. Not you. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. But mighty God, he has shed his blood. We are bought with a price. And for that reason, we can do what? Come into his house. We can stand right inside here. And we can lift up all the hands. And we can worship him. No longer do we go to anybody. As we come up through those steps. And we enter right down there. We know where we are coming. Where are we coming? In the house of God. And we know that what, what do we do? We are to present ourselves. Present ourselves before him. As what? As what? A living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Which is what? Our reasonable service. Mighty God, we lift up all the hands unto him. But not only are our hands to be holy, but guess what? Our body, it belongs to him. Keep it holy, mighty God. Because guess what? We come here to worship God. We, we have passed the river veil. Amen? Amen? Amen. We can come in God's presence. We are gifted. We are blessed. We are just a peculiar people set apart. Mighty God, come up from among them and be ye separated and present your body to him holy and acceptable. Oh, mighty God, because we know what? He demands from us holiness. It is a requirement. Mighty God, it's a prerequisite to heaven. Mighty God, not even the mouth that we have the Bible said, it's what not go down, it's, um, they can defile our body. But it's what do what? Come out. So in order for us to keep this body holy, we have to be careful of what, do, what comes out. Mighty God. And for that reason, when we stand here, we stand here as God's children. We stand here as God's people. Ready to give sacrifice, offering our sacrifices of praises, singing songs unto Him. We are not singing to nobody. When we know that our bodies are holy, and when we know that we have lived a life that is pleasing unto Him, when we come inside here with our holy bodies, with our bodies that we are preserving for God Himself, guess what? He is going to do the rest. We leave everything to Him. Because guess what? We know that we are living a life for him. It's not for me. It's not for you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am
Somebody want to lift their hands one more time. Oh God, and just give him thanks. You deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Anybody visiting with us for the first time? Praise the Lord Jesus. You're here for the first time. Praise God. Could you say your name and where you're from? You're from? Oh, more. Okay, God bless you. Good to have you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. All right, so we have our regulars. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God, Mr. V. Bird Pinnock. Praise God, Miss Dorothy. Praise God, Mr. Gilzine, Miss Gilzine. Praise God, Mr. Samuel Watson. Praise the Lord Jesus. Kelani Carroll, hallelujah. Soria Tanzana. Praise God, and Nif Williams. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And if Williams, who is that? Praise the Lord Jesus. And Mr. Ruan is here. And we have also Mr. Fisher. Praise the name of the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Good to have you all worshiping the Lord. You are at the right place at the right time. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And notice I call some name and some people are still sitting. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You are not glad to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. God has been good. He has kept us from burial. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we are here one more time to worship him. We are here to praise him. We are here to magnify him. Because he has been better than good to us. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The JPS might not have given some of us light yet. But praise the name of the Lord. We have the light of the world inside of us. And that is Jesus. And because of that reason, we can clap our hands. Hallelujah. We can exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can those who are close to them make them welcome. Praise God. The grace and truth family. Praise the Lord Jesus. Good to have you. Special welcome to those who are viewing our YouTube or live stream. Or if you may have joined us from Instagram link at GTTUPC. Praise God, we're glad to have you. Let me say, those who are in house or if you're online, if you are in need of prayer, baptism, or access to our counseling resources, feel free to call or WhatsApp us at 876-816-6732. Praise God, how could I forget the departmental leaders? Praise God, our dearly beloved Pastor Williams. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God, good to have everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. And on behalf of Pastor Williams and the Grace and Truth family, just continue to worship the Lord. Continue to lift him up. You are here for no other reason. Praise God to exalt the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The song says, if I, hallelujah, and I, if I be lifted up from this earth, then I'll draw all men unto me. So let us just lift him up. Somebody want to see God do a drawing in the house this morning? Anybody want to see God do a drawing? Hallelujah. Somebody with all the Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. We will praise you for the rest of Hallelujah. We will praise you for the rest of And we will praise you for the rest of
just here smiling a while ago, we, we are singing that I've got mine, but you don't look like you got anything. Amen? Amen? You know what happened? So many persons receive electricity during the course of this week, and the moment they get it, a lot of people put on their status, a lot of people, you could hear them shouting, They got theirs. I've got mine. <laughs> and when you got yours, you can't have it. And persons doesn't know you have it. That's the problem we are having right now. You have yours. I have got mine. You don't have it, man. Mr. Music, could we try it one more time before we proceed? And I will find out how many persons have theirs. I have got mine, my brother. I have got mine. Yes, I have got the Holy Ghost. Surely do it fine. Well, the devil throw his net at me, but it never reaches time. Well, I have got mine, my brother. I have got mine. Yes, I have got mine, my brother. 
and leave the presence of Almighty God the way I came. Amen. Amen. See, there's something about the presence and the spirit of God that makes the difference. And that's the reason why I journey to be here. Because as we speak, I could be otherwise minded. But because of the love of God, Amen. the blessings he has bestowed upon us, we are forever grateful to him. And this is the one way we show how grateful we are. By coming into his presence and get crazy for him. Amen. Amen. What you want to say about me when you leave, I'm sure that's your opinion. Amen. But how I feel in Jesus, that's a fact. Amen. God is good and he's wonderful. He is great. I'm going to be asking Sister Thompson to come. He is a wonderful God. Praise the Lord, everybody. She's wondering why she's coming up here. Amen. On behalf of the Grace and Truth family, we are giving you this token. We are grieving just the same you're grieving. We know the pain you're going through. She let me have teary high a few weeks ago when I saw Sister Thompson crying. I know the pain she, she, she was going through, is going through at this moment, the loss of a family member. We mourn just the same. It is small, but little is much. And the love is still flowing. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. We serve a great God. Is nothing too hard for him. Somebody feel like they want to worship. I feel Jesus in this room. in this room. I don't know if you feel what is happening here, but there's a sweet spirit that is passing. Mm. Hallelujah. I have a baby to be blessed. And I'm going to be asking the parents to come. Or the family of the child to come. family members of same to come.
poor, I will receive them, hold them in my bosom, be a shepherd to those lads. For in my heart, they shall with me in glory live, suffer the little children to come unto me. From the book of St. Mark, chapter 10, verse 13 of the chapter. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them, and the disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Today, we will be following the same example of Jesus Christ. Amen? I believe that children should be blessed. Amen? And, and I'm looking here at all of these, and I just found out that I had the privilege of doing all of them. And I want to? Boy, I wouldn't try to live, you know. But God is a good God. He's a wonderful God. And it means that I'm getting whole. God is such a powerful God. And so it's good to see the man. Amen. Uh, it is very important that men stand and be counted. Amen. Amen. You did not donate. I hope not. I don't believe in donors. And if she told you anything about me, she will tell you that. Amen? All right, beautiful. I believe in family and God believes in family. And as you are here with your children, child to be blessed, I, I want to tell you as a man, stand up for the rest of his life. Amen? If you don't have uh, money in your pocket, this boy must eat. Amen? Amen? Uh, somebody was sharing with me, I think it was last week, Sunday evening, and he, the thing he said to me struck me. He said, many days he could not go to school because his dad says he's not leaving his pocket empty without a smoke and a drink. So as long as the smoking and the drinking money is in the pocket. If you want to go to school, you go. But when I go out on the road, smoking and drinking must be in my pocket. Your child is first and foremost. Everything come after. Give him the money and go out the road, go beg right from bus. All right? Amen? Amen. Mother. Let me encourage your hearts to be good parents to your children. And it is very important that you just not bring them to be christened, but train them up in the way of Almighty God. Amen? That is important to know. Because as we stand here, Jesus is going to come. And he's going to judge you for bringing the child and say you're giving the child to Jesus. And then you take him back. Amen? As a boy, we would say a big bump won't come and you're for it. But for God, he's going to judge you for it. Amen? So how you groom the child as the child grow is very important. Amen? Help me.
for it. Amen. God is a wonderful God. We have Kaiwan Fisher, and we'll be giving him to God. Amen. If you bow your heads, close your eyes in the presence of God, let's do it together. Father, we thank you. We worship your name. We honor you. God, you're a God who believes in family. And God, I believe today as this family journey to be here and to offer this young life to you. Uh, God, I pray for the parents that you'll provide food on their tables. Whatever their needs are, you would be their provider. God, I know, dear God, you're able. And God, you can do the extraordinary. God, there's a family that begins. And God, I want it to be finished. God, I want this woman to be chosen to be a wife. And God, they will grow this child in your fear. And God, this child will come to serve you as Lord and Savior. He will come to Sunday school. Uh, God, so right now in the name of Jesus, I present this Mr. Fisher to you, God. Another life, dear God. An innocent life, God. He can only live what he learned. And God, I pray, dear God, that his parents will be an example to him uh, to follow. And in so doing, dear God, his life, dear God, will be that light that, dear God, this world is searching for. I pray for food. I pray for provision over his life. I pray you will keep him from harm. I pray you'll keep him from danger. As he go to school, dear God, you will protect him, dear God. Ah, God, from harm, from danger. God, you'll help, dear God, that whatever been passed on to him, God, he will retain it, dear God, and be as it were, dear God, as somebody will contribute, dear God, to this country. Father, we pray for your blessing upon his life. We pray, God, in his going out, in his coming in, you'll protect him from sickness, dear God. No evil will befall him, neither any plague will come near his dwelling, God, because even now, as we place your Holy Spirit upon him, an anointing, dear God, the devil, dear God, will be conquered. Every spirit that is not of you, God, will be conquered in Jesus' name. Can we stand as we lift our hands and worship him? We're still in worship. And we're still worshiping the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Let me thank you all for coming. Those who, the welcome is already done. So let me just do a big welcome to all that are here visiting with us today. Happy to have you in grace and truth. Welcome to church, a spiritual center for life, a family church. Amen. We love the Lord. We love to worship. We love to praise him. Amen. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter, it's not 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Um, I'll be reading from verse 20 of the chapter. And our time is going But in a great house are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of pearls, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, 
he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and neat for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned question avoid knowing that they do gender strive. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but, he, but be gentle in all, unto all men, up, up to teach patience, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the sneer of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Father, we thank you. We praise you for these words, their life, their power. God, as we are here, God, we pray that as I open my mouth, dear God, you will give me a word in my spirit, the right word to speak at the right time. And God, we will leave here as human beings, dear God, being edified by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at your neighbor, shake your hand, give them a smile, say something nice to them as you sit. Amen. I trust and hope you did the same. We are dealing with today honoring your body. And if you honor your body, it will be a vessel fit for the master's use. Three most deadly sin that can be done in the body. There are three of them. Number one, and before I get there, some might seem like nothing, but they are really deadly sin. And God look at them, and God counts them. And God does not like them. The first one is selfishness. A person that is a selfish person, God is against you. And that sin is done with the body. Amen? So if you are selfish and you are a Christian, you are not even near to God. Secondly, loss. And loss, every one of us who sits here know what I'm talking about. Amen? And the third one is pride. So what are the three most deadly sins we deal with as human beings? Selfishness. Loss and pride. We're living in a world where we will see, we are living in a world where selfishness is at its peak. Everybody's about me, myself, and I. Nobody else care about anybody else. Don't you see what is happening around us, brethren? People don't care about anybody else anymore. But it's just about myself and, and I. And God does not like it because we should be a group of people who care for other persons. But that is not so. People don't care. People don't care. 
they just want to live their life and live their life. And if they can get the world out of you. And some people just associate themselves with you just to get out of you. And as soon as I get out of you, I'm done with you. Me. You didn't know that? Some people will sit on your back. Ride you along the way. And when they reach their destination, not even a thank you. Traveling on the road many days. To stop to give somebody pass, it takes a lot from the vehicle. Pedestrian, you know that? Kim, you would have to understand what I'm talking about. Because you're going to have to sink the clutch, disengage the engine, press the brake. That's quite a bit, you know. But it looks like nothing. And put back the vehicle in one gear. And the stress that is on the vehicle to move off again after it come to an halt. It use more petrol, more stress of everything. But many of the time you stop on the road to give persons pass. They walk as though. And sometimes when they cross on the other side, I pulled down my window and said, thank you. Because although it seems like I am the one, they stop to give pass. So I said, thank you. Ladies, it might sound bad. But I have a phobia for ladies who drive. Because it doesn't matter how stop or what you want to stop and give them pass. Their hands cannot touch the horn to honk it to say thank you either. The men, any men in the room can agree with me? Thank you, Jesus. The hands they are going up. And I wonder if they don't understand courtesy. Or it's just about myself. Or if he never did a look me or, or like me, he would stop to give me a pass. So you know, I mean, I have an unk me on to make him feel like smarty. I don't know what they think. But it don't no, no look good, it don't no feel good. Selfishness is not good. And let me encourage our hearts as Christians. That should never be a part of us. Loss. Many persons loss with the body. Women loss. Men loss. And if you're looking at it from a sexual perspective, you'll realize that a woman would loss and hold her composure. While the man can't, it's like the man can't. So it seems as though the men are the aggressors. When it's not so. You just show that what you see. We lost over many different things. But the Bible have encouraged us as individuals that we should not lose. I realize we are living in a world and the women of this world have reached a point in their life and they are using their bodies to attract. And I don't know. But if I have, if I was out there in the world and I have a girlfriend or a wife going out with, the kind of dressing I see some girlfriend and some wife go out with, with their boyfriend, it couldn't go with me. Maybe I said in this church some years ago, I remember before I get saved, I had this girlfriend. And we're a good girlfriend. And one evening she came to see me. Her daddy came from farm work and she came to look for me. And you know, father come from farm work to dress up in her pants and come, come look, for me, look for me. And she came and stand up in front of me and say, hey, I wish I know where the man. When you can find out which one where the man, we will have a conversation. Have a good evening. Let me just walk. 
I wasn't a Christian. But me know me are the man. So you can't come dress look like a the man and the two man they stand up so. So the things we do with our bodies and, 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 and I remember some years ago teaching this and I remember um, a sister Hopal was here and I asked the question to many ladies who refused to answer me. When you put on a pair of pants, what are the message you are sending? And not many persons were willing to answer. And Sister Opal said, sir, I can tell you. When I put it on and dress, I'm a walk, I'm a look, I'm a look sexy. The truth of the matter, you're sending a lustful message. And you're saying to the opposite sex, look at me. Look at my curves. Look at my physiques. Do you have an interest? I'm available. And this is why I tell you, many women married and live with their husband. And, and, and if you ask them or the relationship work, I told you a couple weeks ago, they say it's complicated. Because even though they are in a relationship, they are still looking for something else. And the spirit of loss exists so much in our world today. It's a dangerous sin. The spirit of lust can destroy us. Our children who go on social media have to deal with it. You pick up your phone with no intention, but you pick it up and the moment you start looking at something, something else comes. Because the truth of the matter the devil know if he can dis if he can get into your mind with loss, he can destroy the man. Can I tell you something that I said in this church some long years ago? This is why sex is so powerful. When a man and a woman have sex, spirit is transfer. And when spirits are transfer, you are you become what you attach yourself to. How many persons were here this Sunday when the young lady came and she had a demon in her? And she was just crying out, and when we realized it was her boyfriend. That was so controlling. He was overseas. But he was right here controlling her in the altar. You know why? Because the spirit of the man who you attach yourself to. Possess you. So many women, you see them, then you good nice daughter leave out of them house. And when you look, you see them come back and them start dressed naked and them start to the crazy stuff. You know what? They just go out there and attract themselves to a spirit. And the spirit start telling them to do crazy stuff. You have an innocent daughter and the moment that daughter have sex, you can hardly control her, him or her because you know what happened? Spirit are transferred. They cannot even control themselves. And this is what the world is pushing because the devil know if he can get all of us to lust and go after worldly pleasures. He knows that when God comes, it's going to be a good doom day for all of us. And we do all of these things with our bodies. So, selfish me, my body. Lustful me, my body. Prideful me, my body. And some people can't sit down beside me. I miscon them. I can't deal with some people. 
and you think you are all that matters. And the Lord can't deal with such people. And every prideful person I know, God bring them down to size. Anybody know? Have you ever seen some people in your community just elevate and when them see you, they must go on, go on, go on, and before you know it, God straighten them out and they, you see them one have to be helping out. God bring them down. So the, the, the right of the song says, if I'm too high, bring me down. Amen? So it is very important as individuals that we should not do these things because if we do these things, what they will do, they eat out our body from the brain. And it says that scientists are proven same. And this is why if, you, if a man or a woman take up themselves to watch porn, you know what I'm talking about? It's like if they start, they can't stop because it affects the brain and it eats on the brain and you can't stop. So every time you find a corner, it's like it's an addiction like ganja and cigarette. You have to take a look. And say, I know nothing, man. Nobody do even see. But what it is doing, it is eating out your brain because every time you spend glancing and taking time to look, it is eating away your brain from God. And you're dying slowly but surely. But mankind still take pleasure in these sins. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, when God placed Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, and he said, look at that fruit tree. Don't eat of it. The day you eat of it, you will die. They went with their bodies. And as they went with their bodies and ate of it, they die. From the presence of God, sins of the body kill your spiritual, the spiritual man from the presence of Almighty God. To the fact that when he's walking, you don't want to feel him. When he's present, you don't want to feel him. You wonder why in an apostolic church, many people who have done sin in the body don't even want to come to church. Eh? Nobody don't know anybody, but them don't want to come. Just the fear of coming into the presence of the Lord, the body is saying to you, don't entertain him. So you don't want to come. And those who come, they are uncomfortable. Sometimes you sit here and you sit on their face. Very uncomfortable. It's like a torture coming into the presence of God. Because you know what happened? God is not near to your body. God is far away from your body. And your body is not honored before God. We don't hear many of this being talked about. But mankind cannot forget. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And any man who defiles your temple, God will destroy you. Because the intention of God, when you welcome him into your body, you welcome him to live in your body. So we should not go around Playing the harlot with our bodies. There's a new thing. And if you travel on the road, you will hear it. 
between the men and the women. And they take it as a pleasure. And you hear a man say, I meet a woman and I ask her, what is her head count? You don't know that? Or the body count? What a short note, what I mean. So they ask, what is your body count? And the woman might look at the woman and might say, a 70 me gone, you know. A 25 me gone, because that's the in thing in the world. The body count have to be enough. Do you know what that means, brethren? How many men you have sex with so far? The woman look for you and say 20. And I say, what? I say, you're yeah, a rude girl. Me a 20, what? You know how much demon she have a walk with? She have 20 men. And if you mix with her, you can get 20 men. Spirit. Jesus save you. So when you walk away, you have 20 man spirit to deal with. Plus your spirit. And every act, you become worse and worse. But God, and you keep destroying your body, you know. You keep destroying your body. Because there are certain kind of things that, that they have to do while they do these acts. And you hear some women talk some things that they have to do that should not even come out of their mouth. But you know what? Because the demon that possesses them, they have to keep going to the extreme. The Lord Jesus Christ wanted to free Israel. And he went down and he called a man and a woman and he said, you're going to have a son and his name shall be called Samson. And the moment that Samson makes with Delilah and make love with Delilah, Samson forget what he was doing and where he was going. He forget that Israel need to be freed. He forget that there's a God to be served. Because he knew, listen, I have it already. Whenever I need to shake, I can shake. And he fell in love with Samson, with Delilah. And Delilah said, listen, I love you. And the men came to Delilah and said, if you don't give me that man, what you have, I say you love. We're going to kill you and kill your family. And Delilah said, this man must be dead. She put his head in her lap and we know the story. She said, tell me where your great strength lies. You can imagine when she loved him up and kissed him up. He lost all his strength. He lost all his thinking. I should not tell where my great strength lie. But he eventually lied many a times. And after lying many a times, he came up and said, if you cut off my ear, I will be weak like any ordinary man. This is what the body will do to us. When we keep defiling our bodies, it takes it time and it eats away at the man until the man is no more. Look at it. We're living in a society presently, brothers and sisters, where our world is saying to us, accept it. It is a part of life. We did not have to have AIDS and HIV. But right now they are saying, if the people have AIDS and HIV, love them, kiss them, do anything to them because nothing is wrong with it. But you know how you get it. And you get it out of loss. The desire to have. We're quiet here today. 
But our bodies should be honored before Almighty God. He, Paul in the book of Romans chapter 12, he begs us. He said, I beg you, dear four brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto God, because it is your reasonable service. When you praise God and your body is holy, you're going to feel the presence of God. He's going to keep you healthy. He's going to work many things in your life. But if your body is not holy before God, all these things will come upon you. It is your reasonable service. In Israel, it is very important that when the king, when there's a war, the king must go to the war. Because the king needs to see what is taking place and give instructions. That's the same. The word of God says Israel was going to war, but David decided to stay home. I'm going to go on here, man. I stay home today and rest. But the Bible says while he was at home, he chose to go up on his balcony and walk around and look. And while Davis was walking around and looking from his balcony, he saw a woman in a backyard having a bath. And the Bible says the moment his eyes see her, it hit his brain. And he ran down and he said to somebody, can you tell me who live over that house? Over there. And somebody said to him, one of your mighty men of valor, Uriah. So in his mind, he said, that simple mean the woman that was having the bath is Uriah's wife. So I'm going to ask you to go and call her because I need to ask her a few things. You can imagine Miss Uriah come over and come into the palace and sat with King David. And he said, I saw you having a bath a while ago and you were so goodly to look at. And she said, you to King David. The Bible said David was ruddy. He was filled with hair. He was built pleasant to look at. Right there, lust was eating out his mind. He lied with her. And she came back two weeks after. I want to talk to you, King. The war is still on. But I'm pregnant. For you. And because loss and sin was eating out the mind. The man said, go and call your husband. And let him come and lie with you. And when him lie with you, you'll see a theme. A long time, man, I get jacket, you know. But Uriah came home. And the man said, go and spend some time. The man said, I can't go and spend time with my wife when my brothers and sisters are out, brothers are out there suffering in the war. That's not selfishness. He insisted go in. And the man said, if you insist, king, I will go in. But the man went home. And he went right before his doorway. And he sat there that night and he slept. Tomorrow morning, King David called. 
Mrs. Uriah, did he come in? No, he slept at the door. And she said, hey, he said, hey, I know what I have to do. I have to get rid of my warrior. He write a letter and give Mr. Uriah and said, take it to the captain and take, this is what I want to be done in the war. And Uriah took his death sentence. Uriah didn't have to die. His wife was his wife. But when sin and loss is finished, it brings forth death. And this is where the world has become. Women, brothers and sisters, sisters go out there and they get pregnant. And they just walk to the man and said, I am pregnant. The man said, I know a doctor. Kill it. And they just kill it. And then come back to church. Because you can't know. Baby dead. Mm hmm. You'll be dead. Me never pregnant. And I believe that what, that's one of the reasons why many women, as you see them go up in here, try to become pregnant and can't get pregnant. Because I, I, I have something pondering in my heart. And if I say it, I might sound funny. But I was listening something and I realized that when Mary got pregnant with Jesus, she was 18 years of age. And she was 18 years of age when she got pregnant with Jesus. So Brother Courtney, I'm now thinking that from 18 to maybe 25 or 28 would be the best time for a woman to have children. You, 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 you get what I'm trying to say? Passing that, you will realize that fibroids and all different kind of things start to grow. Because our childbearing age is now past. So this man had to die because of the loss of somebody else. And this is what causing a lot of women death in Jamaica today. Many women are dying because of loss and selfishness. Because they have one man but he cannot finance the rent, the light bill, the water rate, the year. I should say the year first, right? And the bling bling. So they have to be talking to four men. One named water rate, one named light bill, one near here, and one named bling bling. So they just write them in the phone. So when the phone ring, bling, bling, a call. And when it ring again, what you hear a call. And when one finds out that he's been used, he's not taking it lightly. And when loss is finished, it brings forth death. And people is taking their bodies and using it and they don't even care. When your body is the temple of the living God. Mothers. Your daughter is not married but you bring home somebody. 
Your son is not married, but you bring on somebody. And as soon as they reach in, mama, you go spread up one bed. And so you can't take the room there. In a house. You know, Elder Query said, the man who sell the rum and the man who drink the rum is the same man the opola is just as bad as the thief So when you put your children with whatever in the room and close the door, you know what is going to happen. And you say, thank God didn't get one man. I thank God didn't get one girl. But deep in your heart, you know what is taking place. Bodies is being defiled. And brain is being eaten out. And death is next. God have mercy. Spirit is being transferred. And when it start getting bad, you come to pastor and say, Pastor, I can't control my children. Now. Them just go on, so when you lock the door, you tell pastor. We just spread up your bed, you tell pastor. Some of our children are going to die possessed with spirits. And it become a norm today. A man with a body count of 50 meet your daughter and make love to her and she become a body count of 51. Oh, she, oh, she angled that. Tell me how she angled it. Tell me how she angled it, no? Because she says only one man. Yes, but the man had a body count of 50 and him come with the body count of 50, and you end up with 51 man. So when you see one man out there, you cut here and I say, me not like you, boy. And this is why many ladies are attracted to other men, because you know what? That man, sometimes you have all that man's spirit already. So for the man to, Psst, you don't have the man's the spirit already, because somebody has to bring it come to you. But our bodies should be the temple of the most high God. We should allow God to dwell in our bodies. We should live purified bodies. With purified bodies. You know what happened, brethren? Now, if a woman said that she's a virgin or a man is judgment, people would laugh you. Just God. There was this guy I know some years ago from India. He came and he was working. And he wear, when they are virgins, they wear this kind of a bundle to show that they are virgins. And every day TK come to work. We call him TK. It was a laugh. When you got to take out the bundle, man, blah, 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 blah. And they make it look like a sin. They don't believe in purity. And not many people believe in purity either. People believe in body mass. But these things will destroy us. David reached a point in his life after he committed murder. He committed adultery. He tells lies. He done everything. He had to reach a point in his life now, taking this man's wife and getting married to her. 
bringing her home with her belly. You hear him now? Like David, you know. Since the warrior died, let me just take the wife with the child and bring him home. And take care of them because I'm going to honor Uriah by taking his wife. And, 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 and I take care of the boy for, for him. But the Lord had a prophet who sat around the table and said, that's a lie from the pit of hell. The baby that the woman is carrying is yours. So the man came up with the theory. Huh? There is a man who have so many sheep. And there is one man who have just like a wee kid. And the man with the lot of sheep. Remember David could get any woman he wanted. The man with a lot of sheep. Take away the man one look a wee kid. And David said, tell me who so, and let me kill that man today. That man must die. He shouldn't have robbed the man of his wicked. That's wickedness. And while David was in his rage, the prophet said, sit down, king. Thou art the man. And David slid off his chair. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercy. I need mercy. Many persons are walking around in our communities. They need mercy because they are possessed with different spirits. You watch Miss Matty, good, good daughter. You see her with a little matey bag one evening and she gone out. And when you're looking at the man, you see she'll come back. And next week she'll bleach. The following week, she bore her heels from down here, so gone up there, so. The following week, you see her all heat ring in her nose. You think I see that? I know she alone. The devil is just saying, destroy the body. Destroy the body. Destroy the body. Destroy the body. If you destroy the body, I will get the soul. And that's what the devil is working on. Destroy the body. And we are playing the fool. Destroy the body. Destroy the body. I need the soul. Destroy the body, no man. I will get the soul. Because what is inside of the body is it more important than the body. Anybody know that? What is inside of me is greater than the body that I wear. Because when this body goes to rot, the spirit still lives on. When this body goes to decay, the spirit is going to live on. And who will control that? Is it Jesus or the devil? As I see close, I could tell you more. Give your body to Jesus. When your bodies are sanctified unto God, it will bring about blessings in your body. I implore each and every one of us, be careful who you attach yourself to. They might sound Christian, look Christian, walk Christian, but you can't manage the body count. You become change when body count start to reach you. Different kind of a spirit. Different kind of a demon. So some of us going to have to go home and start praying for with children. Start and night them with oil. And say, God, what kind of body count is them pick up? I wonder how much them have. 
because they, they are not the same person I used to. There's not the same per, they are not the same person I know. And brothers and sisters, sometimes if we see the amount of demons we are coming away, we always go to sleep at night time. Because they are coming with a picnic. And, and, and that's what opened the door for disaster in your house. You know, your parents say some things now even work right in your yard again. The blessing of God came and flow in your house because, because your child opened the door or you opened the door to spirits. The spirits, when they are coming, they can come straight in. Them now stop outside again. No God, no daddy do away. As in coming with your daughter or your son. And you welcome your daughter and your son. Brothers and sisters, even if you have relatives come to your house and they're not married, they shouldn't be sleeping together in your house. Hey! What, a, what kind of church is this? They shouldn't be sleeping together in your house. So listen, principle they are hell. And it's inside of this house. So you know what happened? Daughter, nephew, cousin, whoever you be. If you come with your mate, your mate gonna sleep over there, sir. And you sleep over there, sir. But you're not gonna meet inside here. Hey. hey. Too strong for you? Sometimes you have to leave church wrong. It cannot be. Because you have to realize, brethren, sanctification must be in your house. Your house must be a place that the devil can't access. Imagine live a yard and Satan just walk in as him, as him please. Step in through the door. Sit down anywhere in your house. Because you, in, you bring it in. I had a relative came the other day. And, and where she, where she said she smoked? Vape? Or some, something, something, something. Vape. It's not a cigarette or something, just something you put in your mouth and some smoke, whatever, come out. And she must have taken it up in the house and said, She said, Uncle Cat, I said, not inside of this house. You could have come from far in or near in. Not inside here. Go up on the road or go somewhere, go do what you have to do, but not in my house. So if you want vex with me, when you're gone, it's cheaper you vex. But I am, I still have the presence of God lingering in my house. My house is still sanctified and no demon can step in through the door as they like. Guard your bodies, guard your home, guard your children and guard yourself. Be. You see a good, good boy live out there and go and go mix himself and the good, good boy come in back. But according to tell your boy, you, know, you see a good, good boy come in back. I said, I don't want any woman. I want my person. She, she. I go on like him, a woman. When you know a boy you got. You know when God they go speak up, him just go they go pick it up, you know. And you good, good boy, what that thing say, want a wife. And him go married and get some children. No one nobody again. If one of my boys ever tried to come to my door, tomorrow morning, they would have to find the dentist with for fine at 32. As God knew I would have boxed out 32. We have to stand up. 
and tell your children be careful. Can I tell you this as, as it comes, brethren? Because they sometimes they are attracted to some ladies who have this kind of a spirit. Because the woman that is out here that is doing threesome and foursome of that kind of a spirit. God Almighty, you want to hear it? And when that spirit connects, it does not want to live. It is like leeches. There's more I could tell you. But remember, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And it's not everything you see out of the road. You must and look good. It might look good, but it's not good. When it attacks you, it's going to destroy you. My body is a Jesus body. I'm going to maintain it. I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to keep it spotless. Because it's not everything that glitters is gold. And this is why in Pentecost, no, brethren, I don't I, I realize some people changing it. But you can't follow who are changing. May I keep it. I may not maintain the old landmark as a pastor. If, but from, from back there, who is a member? Who is typically, who you call a member of a church? A member of a church is somebody, and, and, and I heard it, heard the sentiment share. So you might say it and some people feel vexed. But the cheaper you vex. A member of a church is somebody who is baptized in the name of Jesus. Who is filled with the Holy Ghost. And who is living a clean and holy life. Persons are of the notion if the person baptized and received the Holy Ghost. No make them feel too bad for say them on a member. You start the journey, but you're not finished yet. So you cannot be called a member. But you, you start, it's good that you start the repentance journey. Which is beautiful. Amen? Amen? What am I saying? It is not permitted for a saint of God whether man or woman to marry to a man or a woman who don't have the Holy Ghost. That simply means the total Adamic nature of that individual which the Holy Ghost is not destroyed yet. So you can pick up anything when you attach yourself to it. So it is very important that our forefathers would, would tell you the truth. I was preaching Friday night and I asked some ministers the question. I said, I don't know what is going to happen to this generation when some of us are gone. But everything I watered off. And some people not going to hold it up. I would love to see this church packed every Sunday morning. But if I can't get it packed, but I can't get some righteous people inside, I'm good. Some persons who are prepared to go to heaven, I'm fine. Some persons will walk the straight and narrow, I'm fine. We have to guard ourselves. Who wish man would destroy them, their own body? Who would destroy them body? Your body that you love, sir. Why do you think we go to the doctor? And the time we feel like the body, I get funny up in a bed. You know, go on the doctor. You know? Even though the body, I tell you, say, I got dead. We go on the doctor, same way, you know. 
And we're going to the doctor and we have anything where we save the body. We are trying to save the body because the body is important. You want to be here to see a next hurricane. And you can say, I remember burial. Just like I said to somebody this morning, I said, I remember Gilbert. And this, no other hurricane from Gilbert is as powerful as Gilbert. None. All of you would jump up and say, I want to see hurricane. And what you would have seen now is like a little storm in comparison to Gilbert. Gilbert was fast and furious. It leaves nothing in his track. And many persons want to still be around to enjoy this world. Long after, so as soon as your body feels sick. It's a wicked person feels sick and don't try it. The moment you feel sick, brother Courtney, the first thing you draw for the alcohol. And you sniff the alcohol. Whether you want to mash up your brain or you don't want to mash up your brain, you all sniff it. This new generation don't know smelling salt. If some of you in this room had known smelling salt, that is another remedy. And if you take a bottle of smelling salt and put it even too close to your nose for the next 15 or 20 minutes, you don't know nobody. You're gone. Yes, powerful. Do you know what happened? You try to revive yourself. What am I saying? You want your body to live. Anybody inside you want your body to die? No, you want your body to live. Don't destroy your body. Every demon that comes into your body is more stress. And your body. You can imagine you get a 50 body count. Or you sleep at night time. You toss. You turn. You wake up in the night. Eh? Sometimes one of the demons who listen to some love song. You wake up in the middle of the night. Have you take up sitting and putting your ears to play or something. Just to calm the demon. If someone who did that, he said, you tell me. You know, not demon, you know, but just get up and there's a thirsty. You ever sleep and wake up in the middle of the night and want some water to drink? And you have to drink the water? I saw the demon do. You sleep and wake up and you just don't know, say, listen, me just have to listen to that song you before. Daylight. You think you want to hear this song? The demon in your body. You have to have peace. Church of the living God. This is why the church is here, you know, to help people. And not many people see the church as help. They see the church as restriction and tell you what to do. And church people now go run my life. And somehow now got church and pastor running a life. Pastor not running a life. At this I run it. At this supposed to run it. But pastor only I use it to say, listen, man. And the one little body you got, take care of right. it. Can we stand? I'm just wondering if anybody in the room, before I close, who want to take care of it. One body, take care of it. Brothers and sisters, take care of your body. Sister, so and so, if you go out there, the man could have hand some. So tell him not have no hand. Make him go on. Leave him alone. Take care of your body. The loss is going to be there. Take care of your body.
The feeling is going to come. Take care of your body. I'm closing. Sir, ma'am, you're in this room and you're without the Holy Ghost. Make it your point of duty to seek God before your eyes is closed. Because your body will tell you you don't need to give your life to God. Right now, some more convenient care. How many of you watched the, was reading the Gleaner last week or a few weeks ago of this woman who felt a urge of the urge to give her life to the Lord? And the Lord was just tugging on her to give her life to Him. And she said to her fiance, the Lord want me to give my life to him. So let us get married. And then I'll go baptize the Sunday after or whichever day. And you know the Saturday before her wedding she died. The week before our wedding. The devil took her out. Because he knew. After she marries. She would have given her life to God. I don't even think baptism people should have planned it. Let me tell you something, man. You plan in your heart of heart, you just tell this no man. May, may I come to church and if I baptism, a baptism, I just baptize. You plan the devil says now, I will get you out before the baptism. Work up ahead of him. I had something to do yesterday and, and yesterday, and I said to Sister William, Should I call before I go? And I was I was saying I'm not gonna call because it, before the week starts, something said to me, Don't call before you go. Just go. And Sister William said, Sis, when I was nearby, I said, I should have even called. And, and then Sister William said, don't call. And I don't call, but I went. And you know what happened? When you catch a man off guard, he does not have any time to plan against you. And that's what happened yesterday. The persons did not have any time to plan because I was there on spot. So I said, Anna, you have to move accordingly because there was no time to plan. What am I saying? Plan out your life and the devil will get you before you end it. I will tear down my barn and I will build a bigger barn and I will say to my soul, soul rest. And the night as he went into his bed, he hear the sound, thou fool, tonight thy soul is required of thee. The worldly system is saying, plan for your retirement. Whenever you start planning for your retirement, you are planning to die. Save up something, but not say that I'm a retirement money when my girl ready and, and sit down now at that mega spend. Sometimes you will never live to spend it. Somebody who is not ready to retire will spend it. Church, take care of your body. And save, take care of your body. It might look nice now, but take care of the body. Because in your body is your soul spirit that need to be saved. Amen. Rest your hand on your neighbor. I'm going to be asking Brother Sean to come. 
he will be praying for you. Take care of your body. Today you have it, tomorrow it's gone. Today it's sweet, tomorrow it's thick. Today all things are going for you, tomorrow nothing is going for you. Take care of your body. For those that are still seated, I'm going to ask you please to stand as a form of respect for praying to God. Amen. I'm going to ask everybody, I'll be leading the prayer, but I'm going to ask you to pray for the person that's next to you. Um, pray that they tailor their bodies and keep them under God and the covering of God. Amen. Because in times like these, there, they, the temptations are many. But if we can have a focused mind, then we're heading somewhere. Amen. So could we all just um, pray for the person that is next to you on either sides of you? So that the Lord would keep them and that they would keep their bodies. Because they have a responsibility to do so as well. Amen. Lord, you are great and mighty. Thank you for your love, your grace, your tender mercies towards us. In that whilst we were yet a sinner, you gave yourself as a ransom for us. Lord God, and for that we are forever thankful. Lord, I thank you for every person that is here today. Every saint, every sinner. Lord God, thank you, God, for their willingness, or our God Almighty, the circumstances that brought them here. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you would sweep over each and every one of us. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you will help us, Lord, to, to, to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. I pray, God, that within us, Lord God, be not any conformity to this world, so many nuggets were shared in the sermon, Lord God, about how to protect our bodies. Lord God, help us not to sit down and say, Lord, deliver us from this or deliver us from that. Lord God, for sure you have a part to play in that. But Lord, help us to realize the responsibility that you have given to us, Lord God, to live accordingly. Lord God Almighty, we can't just say, God, 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 and do nothing for ourselves. Lord God, for those who need to put systems in place as to how they live their lives for the places they go the people they interact with the conversations they have what they do with their devices lord god almighty i pray that they put these plans in place lord god and that they be all that you have called them to be lord god almighty i pray that over this church that your anointing would take full control lord god almighty even my brother lord god almighty who i'm holding on to i pray that you'll minister to his spirit Lord, help but eat guard his body. Help me to guard my body. Lord, for every person that is in this room, I pray that you'll help us to guard this, our bodies. Lord God Almighty, so that when we come here, that there'd be no hindrances. Lord God Almighty, for those, Lord God, hallelujah, who may have, Lord, committed abortions or participated in them. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you'll grant to them forgiveness even now. I pray that they not go back and repeat the same thing. Lord God, one time is a mistake, but if they continue to do it, Lord, it's no longer a mistake. It's something that they have pleasure in doing. Lord God Almighty, I pray, God, for those who have, God Almighty, gone against your will. Lord God, I pray that to them be extended your grace and that they change and be all that you have called them to be. Lord God, continue to do exceeding abundance above all we can ask or think. Minister to us as a church and minister, us, minister to us as a people. Lord, for those who are online under the sound of our voices, may a commitment be made in their minds, Lord God, to live lives that are pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done and even what you're about to do. Touch us and minister to us with your blessings. We say thanks to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. It is a pleasure to have everyone that is here today, amen, with us, um, no doubt. Um, you could have been somewhere else, but it is good that you chose here to be, amen. Um, and I welcome everyone that is here. In addition, I'd love to make an appeal for salvation for those who would like to give their lives to God. If you'd like home Bible study or a prayer meeting, I 
now is the time to say that, and if not, you can just express it to Sister Yvonne. You can just raise your hand, Sister Yvonne, if there's anybody who is interested. You can speak to Sister Yvonne about giving your life to God, home Bible study, or a prayer meeting. Again, connect with us. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We don't have Twitter. Um, via Grace and Truth Tabernacle or GTT UPC. Amen. Some birthdays or celebrations over the course of this week. Sister Shelley would have celebrated her anniversary on the 11th of July. Amen. Congratulations, Sister Shelley. How many years are you going now? 18 years. Oh, a, a baby. Not baby, a big person. Eight, basically. Amen. Um, sister. <laughs> Pastor William said your anniversary can't married. <laughs> Amen. Sister Roshane would have celebrated her birthday on the 13th of July, which was yesterday. Amen. So, <laughs> Sister Bolton, it's today. Today is your birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Sister Bolton. Happy birthday. One more time. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Sister Bolton. Happy birthday. Amen. So those were the birthdays that were celebrated over the course of last week. Amen. Sister Paulette is reminding persons that she still has Jamaica Day tickets for those that are still yet to collect. And also for all ladies committee members, she'd like to meet with you after church today. Amen. So please be reminded of that. I hope we still are fasting one time per week. I hope we still are reading our Bibles at least 15 minutes per day. I hope we're telling people about God. There will be no service in the church tonight. Um, there will be none on Tuesday night pending we get back electricity. So if we get back electricity, we'll be here on Tuesday night. Otherwise, we'd be at home. Amen. On Wednesday night, we'd have online prayer meeting if the light is back. Otherwise, you're encouraged to pray at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. Um, on Friday night, youth service, just the same, pending if we get back electricity. Also, we have received an invitation to two different places for one the 20th of July, Heart Hill, that is in Portland and Otter Bay, they're having their praise on the hill on the 20th of July. I think that is this week. Saturday? Saturday, Friday, somewhere there about. Saturday, amen. So we're invited to go and support them starting at 6.30. In addition... Greater Grace Gospel Temple, they're having a week of service this week, a youth week type of thing. Amen. And they're inviting us to come and fellowship with them. It is in Deanery Road or somewhere like that. Amen. So for those who are interested in going, as usual, you can make to either of the events, you can make contact with Sister Yvonne and she will go ahead and make arrangements for those who would like to go to either of these events. Amen. Some other announcements. This week is Junior Camp. Amen. For those who are interested in going, young people, juniors, um, the, the, the time would have been almost expended. But if you still want to go, you can go up till tomorrow. Uh, you can just go in. For those who would like to go, I think I may be going one of the nights to the service. Um, I'd be more than willing to carry persons if they'd like to go to camp. I'm thinking perhaps later down in the week, so if somebody wants to go with me, I'd be more than willing to assist somebody in that regard. To, to from Tavern to the location and then back to Lawrence Tavern. Um, continuing. So this week is junior camp. Next week is teens camp. And the week afterwards is youth camp. If you'd like to go to any of these camps, feel free to um, say so. On the 26th, which is next week, Friday night, we'll be having our half-night prayer meeting beginning at 8.30. For those... Everybody, by then we're supposed to get back light. Because I don't think over here is that bush. Bad bush. <laughs> so, if we get back light by next week, Friday night, all should be well for our day of, or night of half-night prayer meeting. 
beginning at 8.30. Some other general reminders of upcoming events. From the 12th through to the 14th, we'll be having vacation Bible school. Now, last week, it was said that it was the 5th to the 7th, the 5th to the 7th. That was said in error. It is instead the 12th to the 14th of August. On the 9th of August, we'll be having our Jamaica Day, um, which would have been advertised earlier on. On the 18th, we're having our back-to-school service on Uniform Sunday. Please don't forget, wear, wear some uniform clothes. Amen. And on that Sunday, we'll be giving out things for those who will be going back to school, books, and other, other stuff. Amen. On the 19th through to the 23rd, we'll be having youth corps. So, member brethren, please, if you're thinking about taking one, if you're thinking about taking two, please make those arrangements. You don't have to feed them or anything. All you have to do is put them up. Amen. And we evangelize the community for the sake of God. Because if many of us don't have the time to do it, it'd be nice to bring in other people who can assist us with stuff. Amen. Those are your announcements for this week. Um, the Lord bless you. Could we all please stand as I give the benediction? As we raise our right hand. And the reason for raising our right hand is a form of receiving the blessing. That's why we raise our hand. You know, like you have your hand to receive something. That's our reason for raising our right hand when the blessing is being said. So, surely goodness, three times after two, one, two. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One last time. Surely Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord.